Welcome to A Life Designed. My name is Tina Heisman. I help women who value connection with their loved ones above all else, but are struggling with the overwhelm of trying to balance everything in life. When they work with me, they discover how to design their life so they can enjoy that connection that they are seeking. Ironically enough, the topic of today's podcast is what to do when your people are driving you crazy. And by your people, I mean your family. But before we get started with that, I have something for you. It is a daily gratitude worksheet. You can use this worksheet to cultivate more gratitude in your life, which by the way, will help you feel more connection with your loved ones. So I will put the link for this for you to download it into the show notes. And I would also like to invite you to my private group on Facebook, where you can come to get positive inspiration for your life. Search A Life Designed in the Facebook search bar. Now let's dive in and talk about what to do when your people are driving you crazy. So first I should mention that today's podcast is being written and recorded during the time when many of us have a shelter in place order in our city or our state because of the COVID-19 virus. And so I don't know if any of you are like me, but I'm used to being a work at home mom, home all day alone while my kids are at school. And so right now everyone is at home with me. And as I was writing this podcast for you this morning, I had to say out loud to my people, "Um, this is not an environment conducive to work. (laughs) I was trying to be like funny but serious at the same time because I was trying to concentrate on my thoughts and what I wanted to tell you today. But my husband and my son were very excitedly talking about a project that Tyler is working on. And so nobody was doing anything wrong, but I was just like, ah, I can't think. And so I'm sure that right now you probably have a lot of similar situations in your house with people like bumping into each other, probably literally and figuratively speaking as well. And so it's kind of hard to find time alone or time to concentrate or think when everyone is home 24 seven. And so I'm laughing because even as I was continuing to write this for you, one of my children or both of them kept coming down the stairs to talk to me about something they were excited about, like good news, good things. And then I'm trying to write and they're coming to talk to me. And so, you know, like you feel a little bit of frustration on one end, but on the other end, you want to be connected to them. So you want to, you know, take off my reading glasses and stop what I'm doing and listen. And so I just thought you guys might resonate with that. And um, I want to talk to you about that because I think right now our stress levels and frustration levels might be a little higher than normal because we're around all of our people all the time. Not to mention the fact that this whole situation is a bit scary and stressful in itself. So I want to help you deal with this. So although I'm sharing this these tips with you today, now, during this time, what I'm going to teach you is is timeless. So you can deal, use this to deal with these issues at any time in your life. And so keep that in your mind. Anytime, this will work for you. And so the first thing that I want to say to you is that if you are in an annoyed state right now with one or more of your family members, that nothing has gone wrong, then that's okay. That's normal. That's life. Life is said to be like 50-50, like 50% of the time things are good, 50% of the time things are bad, right? And so just knowing that I think helps us to know that it's not going to be like that forever and that we are just, that it's normal, that there's nothing completely that has gone wrong here. And so knowing that then, well, what can we do to feel better when we find ourselves in that annoyed state or frustrated state? And so I want you to get out your pen and your journal. You know me. I'm all about the writing because it works, you guys. I promise I would never make you do something that didn't work. I only teach you tried and true things that I do myself, that I do with my clients, that I've learned from the experts. And so please grab your journal and a pen because we are going to have ourselves a little venting session. Step one is to start by writing down everything that is annoying you and how it's making you feel. Just go for it. There's no censoring needed. Just get it all out. Write everything down, all of your thoughts, all of your feelings, you know, all of the stress and frustration about whatever it is that you're trying to do and get done, but you're getting interrupted or whatever is going on. This is going to feel so good. It is healing because it honors the feelings that you have and it's healthy 
because it allows you to take out your frustration on paper instead of another human. And it allows you to slow down and evaluate what you are thinking and how you are feeling, which is going to help give you perspective. So that is why step one is to just vent it all out. You can use swear words. You can say things you would never say in public. Nobody's going to read it. Just just get it out. Vent it out. Okay? Now step two, I'm going to invite you to go a little deeper with me here. Step two is to look at that list of things that you just wrote out that are annoying you. Find the one thing that's annoying you the most or frustrating you the most or causing you the most pain. And see if you can find a possible explanation for why that happened or why that is or what the behavior was. It's like playing detective. So I want you to put yourself in the other person's shoes for this. So like some of the things that I'm hearing, for example, like some women are wishing that their husbands would do more while they're home, even though they're home. And so like one woman said her husband emptied the dishwasher but then he didn't put the dirty dishes that were next to the sink in it afterward, right? And so she was like, really? Like, that's like a half-assed job. Why would you do that? Well, what we want to do here is say, okay, like what could be a reasonable explanation for why he didn't do that? Like maybe a work call came in as he was doing it, or maybe somebody called to him from another room, they needed it, or maybe he had to go to the bathroom and he just left and went to do that and got distracted. Or maybe he thought, I'm just going to do a nice thing for her. I'm going to empty the dishwasher. Like maybe maybe that was his gift to you, even though you don't quite see it because you were expecting him to do even more than what he did, right? Do you see how that can kind of help to think a minute about where that person might have been coming from? Now let's take a look at the kids. Like maybe your teenager is having a meltdown. And you think there's just absolutely no reason. You know, maybe she's not listening to you. She's giving you a hard time. She's giving you a meltdown. Put yourself in her shoes right now. Could it be that she's a little scared, a little sad, maybe misses her regular life and her friends? It could be in that putting yourself in her shoes will help give you some compassion for how you will handle it with her. Or maybe like the example I use this morning, like everyone around you is talking and you can't concentrate. So like putting yourself like in the shoes of the other people, they're just having a great conversation. They're not doing anything wrong. But looking at myself, I could think, well, maybe I should move to another room. Like if I'm in a, like a writing space, I mean, I thought I would be alone (laughs) where I was, but (laughs) maybe what I need to do is go in another room and close the door. I saw a friend of mine today on Facebook put a picture up um, when her daughters were in their room on a Zoom call for school, they would put like Zoom in session, uh, this little sign on their door, like, right? So Um, It will help you when you write this down and then take a look at it. It'll help you see where there could be other solutions. And it will help you see um, what you could do to be more connected to your loved ones in this instance instead of disconnected in your frustration. Because what's really what happens so often is that we do the opposite or we get the opposite reaction of what we want. Like we create disconnect in our relationships by like getting frustrated with our people and like maybe reacting out of anger. And so this process will help you see that what's bothering you, you might see that's really not a big deal and you can let it go. Or you might see that a conversation needs to happen as a result of what you discovered. You're like, okay, maybe we should probably talk about this. And so the blessing here is that if you do decide you need to have a conversation about it, you've done the pre-work and you've got your anger out and you've got your mind right so that you can approach the situation in a more loving, peaceful way instead of maybe just like yelling at people to shut up and go away or something like that, right? And so that is the important piece here is creating the connect in our relationships because we've gotten rid of the feelings of anger and annoyance and so that we can have a good conversation. So that's really important. And so this is some really great work. Like if you get this far and you do this work, I'm so proud of you. This is really, really great work. Good work. And so, but you're not done yet. We have step three. Now step three is to write down your intention for how you want to feel about your people right now, your family. So this step helps you remember how you truly want to feel within your family. And it will help you also respond with love instead of react with anger. And now an intention should always be stated in the present tense. It's kind of a mental thing. But for an example, you might say, I have a peaceful family. 
or I have a fun-filled family, or I have a loving family. So all of these things are probably already true, but we forget about them in a moment when we're feeling really frustrated, right? And so we want to remind ourselves, and this is a very positive thing you can do, is stating an intention for how you want it to be. And so here's an intention that I currently have. Our family is stronger because of this situation. Have you thought about that yet with this situation? Have you thought about what you want the end result of this situation to be? I have. I want to come out of this situation more closely connected as a family and bonded, not disconnected by letting our frustrations and angers get the best of us, right? It it makes the worst of us come out. We actually have to do work so that the best of us can come out even in the worst of circumstances. And so setting an intention and thinking about it helps us respond with love rather than react from anger when something feels annoying to us. Because we know that only love can come from love. Love is always the answer, right? Okay, so moving on. Step four is to write down all of the blessings or things that happened that were good within your family in the last 24 hours. So some examples might be, I'm grateful that my husband made dinner. I'm grateful that my oldest son took out the trash. I'm grateful that my daughter kept herself busy dancing this afternoon. I'm grateful that we had a nice time on our walk. I'm grateful that things were peaceful most of the day. I'm grateful that today is Monday and the kids are back to e-learning, and so that will give us a bit more structure. Right? You get the picture. Even in this circumstance, you guys, those are all things that I'm grateful for. And you can be grateful for the things that are appropriate to your life as well. So try to find like five to ten things to be grateful for. This is going to help rewire your brain for looking for the good. And then you can move on to step five. This is the final step to decide on one action step that will make your intention true today. So if your intention is that you have a fun filled family, what is something fun that you could do today? I saw a friend, a different friend on Facebook who posted the other day that she took her little girls out to jump in the rain puddles. That looked fun. That looks like a fun family to me because That looks fun on one end, but also a little messy on the other. But that mom embraced the messy and she had fun. How great is that? Now, maybe you have an intention that you have a peaceful family. So perhaps with that, you decide tonight to try something new at the dinner table. Maybe you all go around the table and say one thing you're grateful for. Or maybe you all go around the table and each person gives a compliment to another person. You can use your creativity here to find a solution that would bring peace, whatever it is. Maybe it's you put on some music, like some jazz music or something um, classical music, something that would create peace within your home or lighting a candle or something like that, right? So the idea is that when we decide how we want our home to feel and our family, and then we take an action step in that direction, it helps us live in that, right? It helps us live in that peace or in that fun. And it shows you that you have the power to make it what you want it. We all, even in this situation, have so much power to make the best of it. And I believe that you, like me, want your family to come out of this stronger than before. And so these five steps are going to help you do that because it's inevitable that you're going to get on each other's nerves. That's just part of life. And we all know that. And so know that's normal. And then these are the five steps to recap them for you. Journal out your frustrations. Get get them out. Step two is pick that biggest frustration or thing that's bugging you the most and try to see it from the other person's perspective or from a different angle. Step three is then to write an intention for how you want to feel or how you want to be in this experience. Step four is to write down then five to ten things that you're grateful for even in light of the circumstances that we're in or the, or the situation, even in light of whatever was frustrating you, what can you still be grateful for today? And step five is decide on one action step that will help you live into your intention because that is going to make your dream for how you want your family to be your reality for real. Your reality for real. How fun is that? Okay, so that is what I have for you today. I really hope that this is helpful, but I do know that it's easier said than done. So reach out to me if you need help. I would love to help you. Let me know if you have any specific questions. Remember to download your free daily gratitude journal. I will put the link for you in the show notes. 
And then if you need some more positivity in your life, join us in the Life Design community on Facebook. All right. Thank you so much. I will see you next week.